talked about these two kinds of level of suffering. It was interesting to hear that, right? So, uh, for example, yeah, like uh, most of people probably in the world, uh, they just do following their desire. I mean, kind of so-called desire. They, if they're angry, they just you know explore the world. Um, if they want to drink, uh, they just go drink, and they fight. But another level of suffering is that, oh, I understand that that's not something that I want, but I still do. <laughs> so that's another kind of level of suffering. Did I understand, right? And then actually when you're talking about that, actually I uh, kind of understood why you actually uh, made a question last time during the, my Dharma talk that the zero degree and 90 degree oh, things yeah. <laughs> on the Zen circle. So it's actually led to that kind of theory, Zen theory, that you know, Zen Sung San made this Zen circle, and then there are like a zero, if you have read the compass of Zen, so he uh, kind of presented this uh, uh, five points on the uh, circle, and it's called the Zen circle, like a zero degree, 90 degree, 170, 270, and then 360 degree, make one round. So uh, what he talked about is people just do whatever they want attached to the name and form, right? Everybody want to be rich or, I mean, generally, and be famous, you know, want to have good food. That's kind of described on this uh, zero degree attached to name and form, these uh, very worldly things. But then people will start a little kind of some having notion, like realizing that actually that's not all. And then let's say somebody happened to read the Heart Sutra. So, oh, form is emptiness and emptiness form. That's quite some waking moment. Oh, that's true. Actually, no matter how good I feed by my body, then someday it will disappear. Then what, what, is this really body or not? So form is emptiness, emptiness form. Oh, there is a tree, but actually maybe after uh, one million years, it's not tree anymore. Maybe this uh, belly becomes ocean. So, oh, mountain is water, water is mountain. Wow, that makes sense. That's 90 degree. So the, the, this point is called that actually attached to karma and attached to the idea. And if you remember that there is like a, a form is emptiness, emptiness form. So uh, it, it seems like actually someone at 90 degree has got some kind of realization. Oh, this form is not really form it will turn to emptiness someday. But why suffering, as he said, is the second level of suffering, I think, exactly connected to this 90 degree, because they only understand we intellectually. It has not been actually really part of your own attainment. And actually in Zen, the traditional kind of Zen uh, book, it's called actually Deluded Enlightenment. Like in Chinese, like a uh, uh, manka, manka, deluded, enlight. It's enlightenment. It's a realization. Actually, you have realized that this body is not gonna stay forever, which means you have got some kind of a, this uh, notion of impermanence. Nothing is gonna stay forever. Everything is changing. So it's a, it's actually realization, enlightenment, but it's actually called deluded enlightenment is a 90 degree, which actually you have, I mean, you started seeing that actually form is emptiness, emptiness form, but then the still suffering, why? Because uh, you see, you're still following your desire. And then you see that, oh, that's not something that I don't want, but 
uh, that's not something I want, but you still follow that. So uh, last time also you asked this, like, so is a rock is me, me or rock? It's the same point, actually. Like a becoming one. Like we used to say becoming one here. But uh, uh, sometimes people have this uh, really some idea that become, comp- I'm the rock and rock is me. I'm Hanan and Hanan is me. Also maybe you uh, tonight maybe sit on my seat <laughs> <laughs> and uh, start to maybe go around with the jan stick. Let's see what happened. And then maybe I try to be Hanan and then uh, that's not truly becoming, it's not really true meaning of becoming one. It's not true meaning of I'm and the rock become one. It's only the idea, deluded idea. That's why it's called the deluded enlightenment. Actually, becoming one is more like a meaning that uh, being clear. Everything become clear. So in the moment that actually you, you become one with the situation, it's not like you become the rock, the object that you are looking at. It's actually as you self that uh, you are very clear with everything. The relationship between the rock and you. And uh, what, what's the role of this, you know, yourself and the rock? What's the truth? Of course, you don't think about that at the moment, like all this theory, but it's called the becoming one. So one day I have shared, like, uh, uh, a, a few years ago, I uh, was going to the office in the morning, and then the, uh, this one of the cats, was sitting on a some pile of this wood uh, over there, and I actually was I just happened to look at it, and it was sitting there, and then at the same moment, just without any some uh, kind of uh, uh, intent, uh, I just happened to see this. Uh, our office manager was just entering the temple yard, stepping in, and he was bowing toward the uh, Buddha. Ho. And uh, it was a very interesting moment for me because uh, I felt like everything, each thing is uh, separate, but uh, happening just uh, simultaneously in a moment. So everything has actually is one, but everything is, has a different function. And uh, I don't really think about it, but uh, it was a very interesting, a very clear moment. So, for example, that's that moment can be called becoming one. It's not like I, I'm the, the, the cat, cat is the, it's a teaching word. So if we, if we get stuck in some teaching word, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a very, uh, you, which means you're attached to the word and uh, it's very difficult to get the true meaning of this teaching word. But if you, yeah, as you said, if you experience the moment, then, uh, oh, why becoming one is important, moment to moment. Yeah, again, in the word, that because in a moment, well, the substance is all the same, but the truth, function, the function can be all different. At this moment, we are becoming one, actually, but... I'm speaking, you are listening. I'm answering, you are making question. She's translating. These guys went to prepare for our dinner. It's a becoming one in the word. But if you say that, so becoming one means, okay, that guy is me. Why am I sitting here? Well, that, that's, uh, that's the kind of 90 degree, I mean, in theory, 90 degree Understanding, oh, form is emptiness, emptiness is form. That's why suffering, because there is a gap. The true attainment and just understanding intellectually. What if we, you know, <laughs> these 180 degree things? But that's why we have a konga, like uh, actually for each point. For example, like, uh, you know, the 180 degree that someone really attached, which means uh, have not really digested this emptiness and only attach, like someone can attach this 90 degree, like, oh, 
form is M3 is M3 is form. It can be a problem. Like if we have a kongan dropping ashes on the Buddha in our kong, one of our kongans. That's about this 180 degree. One guy is really attached to this point. Big problem. He come and uh, start smoking cigarette to Dharma room. He, uh, one man uh, come in the Dharma room and starting, uh, uh, start smoking cigarette and dropping ashes on the Buddha. The famous Kongan, you know, or uh, Sangha. So yeah, 90 degree also is something like that. If you attach to this idea, then definitely trouble. It's not like a, a becoming one. It's an idea of a becoming one. So, uh, yeah, it's true that uh, thinking can uh, bring another thinking and then the thinking can confuse us and then the, it's very different from uh, experience itself as you actually present it. Is there any other question? Sunim, could you also explain this uh, last point? I didn't get it. 20, 270 or? 270. Yeah, well, and the 300. Ah, or the, the others. If you could, yeah. please, thank you. It's a little, uh, yeah, so 90 degree and the, uh, 90 degree, 180 degree, and then I just talked about 180 degree, which means uh, true emptiness. If it's a true emptiness, no problem, but usually, when we talk about emptiness, like the guy smoking cigarette and dropping ash on the Buddha, that they attach to this, you know, oh, the substance, everything in the universe share the same substance. So, ash and Buddha is the same. He and I the same. Uh, then, some trouble. So, uh, if you attach to the point, then uh, definitely there's a trouble. 270 is a little, uh, I mean, kind of careful to talk about because <laughs> that's uh, something that all, uh, many uh, people are kind of uh, curious. And then uh, if you uh, ask me, the have you so uh, flu in the air? <laughs> then I have nothing to say. I have actually <laughs> in the night. <laughs> but also, yeah, some kind of special experience uh, you uh, might probably have had, just not recognized. And there are a lot of actually some special moments that actually you can see. Uh, then the 360 degree is actually the most interesting because uh, uh, even in theory, it's interesting because it's uh, all the way around the circle and they came back to the zero degree, which means where we talked about all this uh, desire life, which that, you know, you practice, so to say, then you actually, the point you come back, return, is the exactly the same place where all these uh, sentient beings are struggling with full of desire. But, of course, the place is the same, but the one who have already digested all the way has a completely different take about this place. So, for example, someone asked the Zemel Sung San that, so you, you are regarded as an enlightened person. So before you get enlightenment and you, after you get enlightened, what's the difference? And the, his answer was, oh, before I got enlightenment, the sky was blue. After I got enlightenment, the sky is still blue. So it's, the, it's, the, it's the, uh, uh, pointing out this 360 degree. Skies are still blue. It's the same place, but it's a totally different perspective. It totally 360 degree different take about the truth. Skies blue. 
the one who's struggling at zero degree, yes, yeah, sky is blue, there are many suffering because it's only about name and form. But the one, someone like Zemme Sung San, he, as he expressed this, sky is blue, 360 degree, same object, truth, no suffering because no attachment to name and form or desire. So in some sense, the, the reason why we practice is to attain this 360 degree, but that place is not separate from where you are living, where you actually struggled, right? As a, that's why if you see many like a Buddhist uh, uh, symbolic tankas or uh, some, uh, this, uh, yeah, some paintings, it shows that. For example, like uh, the uh, 10 ox paintings, you know, a boy tried to find this uh, ox, right? That's all about our mind as you probably uh, uh, read it. So uh, the, the last one, the 10th painting after this boy got, okay, enlightenment, and then uh, he uh, goes to the market, which means, yeah, after he got this 360 degree, he returned to zero degree, where a lot of uh, sentient beings are suffering, so to help. So that's 360 degree. It was very, uh, one time I, I was invited to a, some Tibetan center in Korea, and then the, uh, I, they took me to some changing room to change my robe, uh, and then the, in the room there was this Tibetan style uh, tan ox paintings. It was very interesting because I right away recognized that that's uh, uh, Shimudo tan ox uh, paintings. But in Tibetan tanka, it was interesting. Like uh, the first uh, painting section, uh, there is a, like a fire, and the, actually the so until this boy got this. Uh, one the circle, everything disappeared at that point through emptiness. The fire is all in each painting. And the, when the, uh, this uh, circle appear, the fire disappear, and the next uh, uh, painting section that uh, even the circle disappear, and the, everything just as it is, the trees, the water, and the, the, the bird is flying, which means the, the boy disappear, the circle disappear, and the fire also disappear. But then the last painting, this boy become kind of old man, probably uh, indicate the enlightened uh, kind of master. And then he like look at the market and there is a fire, <laughs> big fire. <laughs> so uh, that's exactly uh, matching this uh, Zen circle also. Zero degree, there is fire. Name and form, attached name and form. So let's say that you practice and where you actually return is this fireplace. But it's not like uh, you are struggled because of this fire. You actually exact, reach that point exactly to help. So uh, it's interesting, you know. Um, uh, yeah, that's what I can share about the Zen. So if you are interested in, you can also read the Compass of Zen. There's a, about Zen circle, so uh, uh, you can also read it some more. So uh, our all effort, uh, you came here, and some the residents work hard to uh, support this retreat, is exactly you know uh, presented here on this Zen circle too, I think. Uh, very important, the two things, uh, clear direction, and then just keep trying. Um, so uh, having the clear direction uh, can be very uh, powerful, even when uh, the Marcel asked that when there is some uh, kind of stage where we kind of feel like, I cannot go further anymore. If you have a clear direction, it's very powerful because uh, you don't really check in this or that. You just uh, take one more step toward this direction. 
That's uh, my own experience too. Uh, it's one of the uh, strongest tool. So uh, clear direction. What, what is this life for? Why do you come to Korea all the way to join this retreat in this uh, terrible weather? Oh, although we have air conditioner, but it's still not very decent if you go outside. So why do you come here all the way? There are a lot of fun that you can enjoy in life. Why is very important. That's our direction. And it's very powerful if you actually be very clear with that. I, I actually experienced it. And uh, keep trying. You just keep trying to work this direction. So uh, this retreat actually, uh, I hope everybody can uh, just keep these two very important elements in our practice. Uh, anyway, thank you for your hard practice. <laughs>